Welcome back again. Uh, this video I'm going to show you more about the status bar which is down at the bottom right of your Autodesk window. Uh, I'm going to try to zoom into it here uh, with a little program that I have. Hopefully it works. Um, but this is your quick access toolbar right here where I'm now mousing around and fixing to uh, zoom it in. And that's pretty good right there. I think that we'll stay with that. Um, but this is your quick access toolbar. Uh, right in it, this right here just tells you what uh, drawing uh, field that you're currently in. We're, we're currently in the model uh, field, not the layout. Remember I told you before you have these tabs over here. You got model, layout one, layout two. Well, we're in the model uh, model field right now. If I were in layout, if I click on layout, I go like over here. Well, it's supposed to change to uh, paper. So there it is, paper. I had to click on it for some reason. Um, but go back over here to model, and it says model. Okay, so that's really all that that particular um, item is to tell you which which screen or drawing panel that you're in. To the right of that, we have. Um, display drawing grid off and on and basically you just left click on it like you're clicking on any other icon and then your drawing grid shows up left click on it again and the grid goes away as you notice when you turn it on it lights up in blue turn it off it goes back to gray the next one is snap mode and basically this uh, turn it on and you can snap to the individual um, grid intersections okay so where the lines intersect the uh, cursor will actually snap to those when you're drawing so that you can kind of use those lines as a guide and then of course you have the little drop down menu here and you can change either to grid snap or polar snap and we'll kind of go into that much later uh, but typically you just use it for grid snap. I usually don't use it at all. I actually just use uh, what I call object snaps, which I'm also going to go over those. Um, this next icon here is uh, to restrict the cursor orthogonally. Okay, and what that means to restrict it orthogonally, I'll go right up here and choose a line. To draw a line, we'll just draw right here. Is that when I turn that on, I can only draw in 90 degree angles, you know, straight horizontal or straight vertical lines. I can't draw angles. See, it won't let me draw an angle. I'm trying to move my cursor over to make it draw an angle, but it snaps back to the 90 degrees there. Okay, so that's um, usually use that when you're first starting out in a particular drawing, maybe, and you, you know there definitely isn't any angles or curves or anything like that in what you're drawing. So that restricts it to the 80 or the, I mean the 90, um, 180, and uh, or 90 and 180 degree um, angles. Okay, we'll escape out of that. And um, I, I don't use it a lot, I like to have a little bit more flexibility with my drawing. Um, the next one is to restrict cursor to specific, specific angles. Okay, so if I turn that on, I, I can turn it on and then go over here to the drop down menu and select which angles that I want it to restrict to. You see here, it's already set for 90, 180, 270, and 360. That's pretty much the same as the orthogonal restriction does. But I can change it to, let's say, 30, 60, 90, 120. And then I could draw. And whoops, let me go back to the line. Give me a line out of that. Okay, so I'm going to start drawing a line here. And you see, I can, it'll snap to those specific angles. You see the green dotted line that snaps when I get to one of those designated angles. And that makes sure that my angles are of those specific uh, settings and, and there's no way I can make a mistake if those are the settings that I want to use. All right, escaping out of that. Uh, and that's something else I don't always use. Um, 
This one is isometric drafting. That's when you're in the 3D mode or um, well, close to the 3D mode. You're getting into the 3D mode when you do um, isometric metric sketching. But we're not going to mess with that right now. This one is object snap tracking. That's the little dotted green line that you saw um, that popped up. Here I'm going to draw another line. And let's say I want to make it draw it at an angle equal to the tip of that line right there. You can see the green dotted line pop up. That is object snap tracking. Okay, that's where I can go here and pick up that edge, the end of that line. And I just turned it off when I clicked on it that time. But just go over here and just hover, and, uh, and it turns that object snap on or that um, that. Uh, reference point on. Um, the next one is snap cursor to 2D reference points. This little square here with the green dot in the upper left hand corner. I can set this to different snap um, constraints. Uh, right now I have midpoint, endpoint, perpendicular, and inter in intersection selected. Now what that does and I'll show you here. Let's say I'm looking for the end point. Of course, there's the end point right there. It allows me to snap to that. Now I want to snap to the midpoint of that line. Or well, there's perpendicular right there. Okay, and I go over here a little bit to the right, and there's the midpoint. Perpendicular. Okay, and then there's another end point. Okay, and then there's uh, another perpendicular right there at 90 degrees. And then there's the uh, midpoint at the little green triangle that you see there. You can also look back at some of the other places that we attached to, and you still see the green plus marks showing those areas that we had uh, activated, you know, those other midpoints and perpendicular points and end points that we activated. Okay, so that's basically what that does. And that is very useful. I use it all the time. Now you will, depending on what you're drawing and how detailed your drawing is, you will have to go in here and turn some on and some off so that you ensure that you hit the exact point that you're after. Sometimes your end point and your midpoint uh, snaps can interfere with uh, maybe you're trying to get to a geometric center or to a node or something like that. Well, the endpoint and the midpoint will interfere and they get kind of confused. So you'll have to go in and turn some of these snap targets off and then some of them on to make your drawing more accurate. All right, um, now for now, that's what we're going to uh, cover. Uh, we're not going to go into some of these really fancy ones here yet. That'll be more advanced stuff. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is scale. Um, you don't have to figure your scale here. You can actually set it uh, clicking on the little drop down arrow here. And it should come up with something. Let's see. Let me get out of that. Okay, here we go. So um, I don't want to do that. Okay, so I can click on that or hover over that and I get my different scales show up. Okay, here are the ones like we've been working with the uh, there's your quarter, three eighths, half, three quarter, one. Typically, you'll draw and uh, usually it defaults to uh, one to one. Okay, so when you're drawing, uh, usually what you're going to do is draw one to one. You start messing around with scale uh, when it gets ready for plotting or printing. And then, too, sometimes when you're moving, um, you know, different uh, objects from one drawing to another, maybe you downloaded what we call CAD blocks from another architect or drafter, and they may have drawn those blocks at a different scale. So you would actually use that scale there to get all the scale factors to equal up. But it's not a big one. You're not going to use that a lot. Um, and we're really not going to mess with it much here in this class until we get around to printing our drawings. Uh, let's see, plus sign, annotation monitor, on or off. And I don't really mess with that. I'd have to mess with it later. I'm pretty sure it just turns your annotations on or off. Um, graphics, you don't have to worry about that one. Oh, here's one. This one where it says workspace switching. Um, 
if I click on the little pull down arrow next to it, I get different workspaces. Right now we're going to be in uh, drafting and annotation, and I wish that would quit popping up here. Okay, so again, click on that, and uh, I guess it comes, something's triggering it to come up there. But anyway, right now we're in drafting and annotation. That's where you'll spend most of your time is in drafting and annotation. Once we get into three-dimensional uh, drawings, uh, then you have different workspaces. This is what this does, and I'll click on, um, let me go ahead and zoom out, go back to a normal screen, and you see now I'm in drafting and annotation, you see the tools that I have at my disposal. If I go to 3D modeling, and then you see it changes, it gives me a whole another set of tools to think about. It's still got the same, like the draw panel with the same drawing tools in it, but it has some additional tools that you would use in the three-dimensional world. Okay, all right, and then one last one is down here at the end, there's kind of like a customization uh, for the um, status bar. As you see, there's check marks next to a bunch of these words here, a bunch of these terms, and that's because those are the uh, controls that I have visible on that uh, status bar. Uh, you can turn controls on or off. If it's a control that you're not using, you don't use very often or at all, then you can um, turn that control off. And then you don't have to worry about wasting the valuable screen space on your uh, program. All right, so that is it. Please take the quiz that follows and uh, hope you do well on that.